This is Severe MMA on this fly at Bama 20, and we're here with Regis the First Sugden, who once again finishes his opponent with a beautiful right, uh, right straight and a left hook combination. Regis, you said you wanted to do something impressive. You said you wanted to show up your stand-up skills. Rate your performance tonight. Yeah, definitely. I think 10 out of 10. I mean, it was perfect considering... That's exactly what McCormick told me to do, and it worked so perfectly. Like, don't get me wrong, I had plan B, C, and D, but it's so handy when everything just comes off perfect. And I think with the experience and quality I've got in McCormick, you couldn't ask for much more. And what more, what less can you expect from the kind of guys I've got in McCormick? So. You know, you said you were going to try out some funky techniques. We saw some spins, we saw some spinning up kicks and stuff. Again, was that just a, is that a little bit flash to show off, or you know, is that for the fans, or is that how you're going to fight? Yeah. Listen, it's the, way, it's the way I fight. I mean, oh yeah, I do look at my K1 fights and like I stopped three guys that spinning up kick. I mean, clean on the jaw, like three guys completely out cold. So I will land it one day. It's a bit more awkward in the MMA because like I can hear the other corner shouting, watch out for the spin, watch out for the spin. It's like I've got no chance of landing this. But one day I will land it. It might be a bit further along the line, but. At least people know it's there and people are worried about it. So I know if they're calling a shot and they're not thinking about what he's doing, they're thinking about what I'm doing, that's where I want people. So. Bama seemed to have been a really nice home for you. You know, how, how, how much have you enjoyed the experience? And, you know, they're staying busy June 13th. We hear that there could be something in August. Can we expect to see you back at Bama? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I've got, I've got two more fights left on my deal and I'm pretty sure I'll be signing another one. Um, so it, it, at the minute, for me, it's perfect. I mean, there's a couple of guys that I'd like to fight that, they're not stepping stones, but they're great levels Come of on. fighters. Who? A couple of guys, you got people like Matt Wharton, Ed Arthur, Alan Philpott, and listen, I'd love in my next fight to take on the winner of this World Bantamweight title. I mean, let's see how things pan out, but I know I'm more than capable of beating both of them. I mean, Alan Philpott is a great guy. I met him for the first time at the weigh yesterday, chatting away, but that doesn't mean I can't get in there and punch his head in, so. <laughs> I, gotta, I, I gotta ask. Twice now, weight's have been a little bit of an issue. Now, is this is this a case of, uh, you know, give me a break on 19, I'm still growing and, you know, things are going to change? Was it a bad weight cut? Or what's the... It, it, it was a bit of that. I mean, I'm not going to lie, the past two weeks, I haven't been at the best of health. Um, I've not been very well. And that has had a massive effect. It, it stopped me losing weight, sort of like, quite considerably. I was really shocked. Because um, as well, I was sort of still in the gym ticking over, still trying to eat well. My body was dying inside. And, I mean, I'd cut, cut, cut I was training a couple of weeks ago for a few days and it just didn't do many favours really and um, yesterday when I was in the sauna I was in there for two hours straight uh, I'll tell the same story I lost 0.3 of a kilogram and that was it and no more weight was coming off me and it was just a miss up I mean it wasn't my fault um, I suppose it was because I wasn't very well but at the end of the day it was one of them things that couldn't be helped I was I can promise everyone I was trying my absolute best full credit to Ant for taking the fight still um, I think he, but he agreed that, that I'm not the sort of guy that's just going to weigh in heavy. I mean, I will make weight every time I fight um, from now on, whatever it takes. So, Before I let you go, again, a performance like that, uh, you, you say you're looking at the Woodens, you're looking at the Ed Arthurs and the Alan Philpots. I know this interview will come up after the fact, but I don't care. Pick me a winner for the Ed Arthur and Alan Philpott fight. I've got to be honest, I like Ed Arthur. He's a great guy. Um, but if Alan Philpott's got the tactics right, he's going to win this fight. Um, I believe he's got a little bit more to his arsenal. Um, no disrespect to Eddie, he's great at what he does, um, and he's saying he's got these new techniques, and if he has, maybe I'll be edging towards him, but for now, based on recent performances, the shows I've seen, because I've been studying fighters, I, I know most of the guys in the top 20 in my division, so I do believe that Alan Philpott is going to be the winner of that fight. Uh, and so Regis Sugden and Al Alan Philpott, maybe Bama 22 at the, uh, in August? Yeah, yeah, maybe most definitely. I mean, listen, I'm up for it. Alan's a great guy, and it, it, it'd be nice to sort of share the cage with him. Um, who knows what'll happen? It'd be even nicer to take home a shiny belt. Most definitely. A band belt's a nice belt. I mean, I've got a couple in K1, but nothing quite like that, so I'd love to have that hanging in my bedroom wall. So. Regis, thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure. Another great performance, and we look forward to seeing you fight again. Cheers, thank nice you so much. Cheers.